Are you having fun there, Jeremy? Yeah, for some reason that's in the cab with me. Hey guys, it's Nick. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all keeping safe and well. So, British weather. Can you trust it? The sun is shining now. It is drying up, but we had a fair bit of rain in the night and a little bit this morning, which was not on the forecast. So, the plan to carry on combining. We've had to put that back by a couple of days and there was even some cultivation work I wanted to get done. I mean, it might let me do that a bit later if it dries up enough. But yeah, what we're doing this morning is we've got some work to catch up with in the yard. We've got some wheat in the shed here, which came in at about 15.8% or so late 15s, 16% moisture, which we need to get down to about 14% moisture. So we've got our man Ray operating the dryer this morning. I do just want to do a quick shout out to the lads over at Grain Tech who really helped us out last week. We had a bit of an issue with the burner on the dryer. We couldn't get it to fire up, which meant that we couldn't dry any grain. So they came out at the end of last week and got that sorted for us pretty quickly. So yeah, big, big shout out to the lads over at Grain Tech. simple terms, it goes in one end and it comes out the other into the shed. There's an adjustment here, this is our drop time, that basically dictates how long a batch is getting dry for. So we're trying to get this wheat down from 16% to 14%, that's a 2% drop. We've got the drop time set at 45 seconds, it drops about half a turn, just under half a turn at a time. And at 45 seconds, that seems to be about right. Going in at 16, coming out just under 14, about 38, 39%. So we've got that set about right. So it goes in one end, and then as you can see, out the other, it discharges into this bay here in the shed, ready to get stacked away. Just gonna do a quick moisture test, so get a sample here. Right, so that's reading 13.8, spot on. The combine's coming out. We're not going combining. I wish we were, but we're just getting it out of the shed. Because last week while we were combining, the builders were here doing the roof, doing the side. So I thought we'd do a bit of a combine shed update for you all. Out of the combine shed. Out of the combine shed. Combine shed update then, Dad. Yeah, well, it's a bit, it's a bit nearer. Yeah, we've had a bit of work done, like I said, when we were combining last week. The main thing, new roof, if we go around this side, but then probably see both sides. It's overclad. And I think it looks really good. You might not see too well from the sun here, but uh, completely overclad with curved sheets. Timber purlins on top of the originals, and then these sheets nailed, or uh, I think they're nailed actually, obviously with water protection caps. I'm particularly impressed with how level it is because uh, they, there's quite a degree of packing on the on the runners or the bearers. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, get that wrong, the roof's not going to be leveled. No. And the sheets won't fit at all. So. Uh, it was quite involved getting that right. Yeah. Once they're on, nice and level, then resheathing is not too bad a job. It soon went up, actually. Yeah, they did that pretty quickly. This cladding we were going to do in the house because we put pearlies up, if you remember, because we were sort of running sort of out of time a little bit. When I found out about the gutter, I thought, wait, wait a minute, it makes sense to get sheets up first. So get I asked if they could yeah. do it, and they they did to that point because we haven't got the sleepers down. No, so that is next stage, and to get those sleepers down and sheet that right away along. Yeah, so this is a special drip sill. Yeah, and it's just under uh, here, and it's, it screws onto the wall first, and it's just almost like a starting point for the sheets. And there's no way, there's no way a mouse or a rat could get up there. Yeah, which is the whole point of doing this, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, rat-proof shed. But also gives a drip over here. 
And now that leaves it dead, dead right now for putting a drain here if any drips go into the drain, uh, sort of French drain, and then that French drain could pick up with, we'll have to do an underground drain from that downpipe, it's a new downpipe. New downpipe there off the gutter, yeah. And then we're going to take it to that point over there. I'm really impressed how the roof is lying. Yeah, it does look good. Yeah. I mean, if you look really closely, you might be able to see one or two dips, but compared to what it was like. Oh yeah, it's, uh, a, it's a definite improvement, looks good. If you could picture the vertical side cladding all the way to the end of the original Dutch barn, I think she, she looks really well. I said, we shall have to um, bury that. Bury that. And this one, temporarily, has been put onto the concrete. But uh, it, it was raining over the weekend, unfortunately, and actually it worked really well. I just put a little shoe on there and it shot down there. Yeah, yeah. But obviously we've got this to clad to here. Yeah, yeah. So we're probably going to do that in-house on this side, aren't we, sheeting-wise? Yes. Again, there's three purlins, we've got sheets for this, and we've got all the galvanised sheets. Well, we're used, to the, we're used to the purlins, so we put those purlins up ourselves. Yeah. So we'll do the same same on this side, and then um, sheet it ourselves as well. The downside of this roof technique is you don't see the nice new roof. No, you can see the old you roof there, the yeah. Which is the downside, because it's uh, you'll see it like this, all nice and light and bright. And light like, and bright and brand new. Brand new, but there you go. It's a better, it's an insulated roof. So it's actually better. It's much better. Yeah, I don't think it'll condensation quite as much. No, no, probably won't, no. no. Yeah, so we've got to um, get some, some levels up here. Uh, probably compact this initial stone down. Yeah. Because we we'll just put it in, you rolled it with the... Uh, rolled it L53. Yeah, flat roll. roll. Yeah. We probably ought to get at least a whacker plate or... A whacker plate, yeah, get this, all, get this all leveled down here. Then we need Ollie with his laser, and I think he'll want a little bit more uh, to get, get it dead right. But obviously we're going to have the reinforcing mesh, which we're going to stop. Reinforcing mesh and then uh, the concrete. We could consider the concrete, I'm not quite sure how we're going to do that. No, price is up. Yeah, we have combined it and there's plenty of, plenty of width, uh, it goes in really well. Uh, plenty of height at the moment. Well we are... But we are, we are coming up... We are coming up a little eight, bit, eight but I still think the height is fine. Yeah, we've been yeah. out for that. Yeah, we? we have. I hope. <laughs> no, we have. I think we've, we've done pretty well because I think ultimately you, you, you've resurrected an old shed yeah. rather than put one up for the combine. Oh yeah, which yeah. Which in all seriousness probably would do. You yeah. wouldn't do just for a combine, probably no. Probably would. But we had this shed here anyway. You've got something that is uh, actually quite attractive or will be it's quite a nice thing to, ha to, to have on the farm yeah yeah it's going to look really good in fact it, you, can, you can see it now can't you dutch barns uh, they have something about them don't they yeah i do like a dutch barn i do not very wide that one it's 24 foot wide but yeah normally a 30. wide enough to get the combine in yes i yeah. think i run at it well knowing your track record you probably would have a bump <laughs> do <you> mean? <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good actually yeah. No, you well, haven't. There's been a few, few, few bumps. You haven't bumped the teleporter for at least a week, so. What, you, you did something recently. Back into you backed into something and, and bent the light back, didn't you? Ah, I was so. leveraged for stone in the field. Yeah. And th only me. Could only do you could do it in a wide open field. <laughs> no, I wasn't. I was not actually, the, uh, not yeah, the lights well, back. Well, actually, I was um, <laughs> in the corner of the field. And uh, <laughs> I must have just gone to the hedge a bit. I didn't know. Yeah, you tapped it on something. Yeah, it, yeah. It's, it, uh, I, it went back very weak. I'll tell you. I did do that. You did do that. Uh, I would have moaned at you, wouldn't I? You'd have moaned at me if it was me, yeah. and the thing that you definitely would have moaned at me if I had done it is the wall when you tapped the wall in there. <laughs> Which was caught on video. Or well, not caught on video, but <laughs> it happened when we were doing a video. Yeah. Oh dear. Basically, I hit the wall. Yeah. Basically, you hit the wall. So that's better than all those sleepers, isn't it? Oh, it's much better than all those sleepers. That, that, was, that was a lot of fun, knocking those out with the digger. Yeah, still a bit to do, but it's well on track. But the roof's a big thing, isn't it? The roof's a big thing. Yeah, yeah, that's Pro done. It's progress. Yeah, that you'll they'll be right for the 50, 60 years. Right, now we're farming. John Deere, field, brown field, soil. You can almost smell the soil. I love it. So yeah, just going over a bit of ground with our cousin seven leg subsoiler. This is a bit of ground that I cultivated last week with the chisel plow. In fact, this was the field I was in with the case puma that I had on demo, which was an awesome tractor. Really, really, really like that tractor. Very smart machine, very nice to be with. But anyway, yeah, back in the John Deere today, going over that bit of ground with the subsoiler. So we're doing two jobs in one. The legs on the subsoiler, 
are going a bit deeper than the chisel plow so it's sort of breaking up any compaction that's a bit deeper down plus that's going to help with water drainage as well plus the packer on the back helps to consolidate any big lumps that the chisel plow leaves so yeah it's dry enough now to be out in the field but it's a bit too wet for combining the week's just going to be sort of plus 20 percent moisture so like i said we're uh, leaving that for another day or so i mean it is picking up a little bit on the packer on the uh, on the subsoiler but it's not picking up on the tires i'm not making a mess in fact it's doing a really good job so we'll crack on keep the wheels turning So you might be wondering why there's a Jeremy Clarkson dangling in the cab. It's a very long story involving dad's birthday and a full size cardboard cutout of Jeremy. I'll let your imaginations do the rest. Nothing naughty. Well, anyway, with this full size Jeremy Clarkson we had, uh, a little one came with it. So yeah, for some reason that's in the cab with me. Well, there he is dangling away.